So this video is actually going to be shot at night because I was so busy, overwhelmed with doing other things. Like my post for Friday, I did it today and it took me longer than expected. So it took a lot of my time and I didn't get to shoot the video earlier. I like shooting my videos in the afternoon because there's some sunlight and I could actually decompress and talk to you in a more calm and thought out fashion. But it just didn't happen for this video. So, you know, life happens. So I want to talk about purpose, your purpose. And it actually correctly aligns with what I was writing for Friday's blog is about your purpose. Now, your purpose is something that only you can determine. And it's only in your own hands. And a purpose is a reason. It's a reason for doing something. And a lot of people think that their purpose is, okay, I'm married now, so I'm a wife, or I have children now, so I'm a mother, or I went to college now, so um, now I'm a graduate. That's, that's my purpose. And that's not your purpose. Those are just titles, to be honest with you. Your purpose is something that you come to recognize and you make your life mission to accurately execute that, whatever it is. Now... What I first thought my purpose was, was to be a good daughter. Then it turned into being a good friend. Then it turned out to being a girlfriend. Then it turned out to being a college graduate. Then it turned out to being, I don't know. And I don't know is the perfect place to start because like I said, these other titles may bring you joy, you know, saying, you know, I graduated with my master's, congratulations. But that's just the title. That's just not who you are. That's not your purpose to do that. Because truth be told, anybody can get a master's. Anybody can get a, a master's in what you got a master's in. So that's not your purpose. Your purpose is something that's placed for you. And you have come into contact. You have come into realizing it. And your purpose is to manifest it. Now, after college, I realized that college wasn't really what it was cracked up to be. I thought you're going to go to college, you're going to graduate, you're going to feel successful. You know, everything in life is supposed to come together because you have this paper and a game of debt. And I realized that wasn't it. Then I realized, you know, since I had an internship with a nonprofit, I liked what I did. I pursued that internship because I like working with kids. That must be my purpose. And it was... And then I got kind of derailed from a position that I wanted. And I realized, hmm, not really for the whole working underneath somebody or working with somebody who might try to sabotage you. So then I was like, well, okay, I'm still going to pursue helping people. I'm still going to pursue working with children. So I went into another nonprofit, but this one was pay. And I loved what I did. I loved the children, hated management. And I always knew I could not work for somebody. I always knew that. I don't know how I can explain that, but I always knew that I don't like working with people. I don't like people telling me what to do, how to do it. I don't like putting up with people's attitudes. I don't want to put up with people who are annoying. I just knew that working for somebody, there's so much confinement in that, that it wasn't for me. I just couldn't do it, at least not for the rest of my life. I couldn't see myself clocking in and hoping for the weekend to act a fool just to just to decompress from the work day that I can't stand. I mean, let's say you do a full-time job, that's 40 hours a week. That's not including preparation to get to work. That's not including all the things that you have to rush right after work, rush to pick up the kids, rush to do grocery shopping, rushing to do everything else. That doesn't include that. Or outside of work when there's traffic, then that's not included. Or when you're on a train, I know you live in Boston, you know the train around four, not even four, more like three-ish, because that's when the high school kids come out and the, and the middle school kids come out. So around three-ish, four-ish, you're dealing with middle school kids around 4 30 ish all the way to 7 8 you're dealing with adults and that's just compression that's just so much people rubbing and rushing and going and that's what you got to deal with for at least five days and then on the weekends you just go berserk because well 
that's the only time you have to yourself. And I just know that just wasn't what I wanted to do. At the nonprofit, like I said, I like the kids, I like the parents, I even like the teachers. I just didn't like management. And I didn't like, I don't know what my um, other case manager, um, probably like But I just realized that that's not what I want to do. And I felt myself in, being like a zombie, being like, out of mind having to deal with these people having to deal with this circumstance because well it's a job i need to get paid and sally may keeps on writing me letters so i did it but it wasn't my thing so i left that job for another nonprofit, which wasn't working with children but it was working in an organization that helps people with housing and i knew it before because i actually did work at housing for the summers of mayor's youth employment program. I don't know if you got it where you're at, but we have it here and it employs kids between the ages of like 13 to 18 for the summer. I did that. So went in, I knew it was a temporary position, but I'm like, look, if it gives me a little bit of money and it gets me away from dealing with these people and this headache, I'm good. So I took it. Long story short, I did everything I was supposed to do and then beyond that was outside of my job description and still got screwed. And all that detail is going to be in my blog tomorrow, so check that out. I'll put the information in this video. And I was just like, yeah, I can't take this. Like, I just can't take doing this for the rest of my life, dealing with bullshit people, bullshit policy, and then being screwed at the end, even if you do everything that you're supposed to do. And I just realized that my purpose is to walk in my truth. And my truth is... The book I'm about to have out in February called Memoirs of a Forgotten Child. That's my truth. And before today, I was having a long conversation last night that turned into early this morning with this woman that I know. And by her attitude, you could tell that she too has been through some traumatic situations. And she revealed to me that she too had been molested. And I'm like, even though you didn't tell me, you didn't have to tell me, but I kind of knew. I feel like when you've been through something like that, you always know. It's like you can, you can you kind of have to like censor. It's kind of like gaydar, but instead of gaydar, it's like molestation art. It's, 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 you just kind of know. You just kind of know. And I knew. And when she told me that and she was honest about what she had gone through and she asked me, because I post daily snippets, if you follow me on social media, you'll know. She's like, is that real? Is that your true story? And I'm like, yeah, all of it is real. And she's like, wow, you have so much courage because you actually put the book out there, but you actually said people's names. And I'm like, yeah, I put people's name out there. There may be one or two people's names that aren't accurate because there's a part of the story that is their own. And I didn't feel like it was my place to tell other people's story. It's only my place to tell my story. And she was like, you know, I wanted to do that. I have written my own experiences, but I don't know. And I'm like, you have to make peace with what has happened. And that's something that only you can determine when you're ready and when have you made peace. And she was on some, like I was, I don't forget I don't forgive. And a lot of people feel like forgiving is a sign of weakness. Forgiving means that you have given a person a pass for doing wrong. And forgiving, and it took me a long time to process it because every time I heard someone say, forgiving is for you, it's like, yeah, 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 whatever. But forgiving really is for you. You forgive yourself for the shame, for the guilt, for the hurt, for the pain that you impose on yourself. You forgive yourself for saying, well, if I didn't and if this didn't happen, you forgive yourself for that. And you even forgive the person who's done it in a sense of you no longer hold what they have done to you to keep you captive in the way you are. You don't let that person have power over you where you feel like you can't do anything anymore, that you are going to just trick off your time, trick off your life, that you're just going to be the victim. You don't allow that person to take your courage, your strength, whatever you can be in life and hand it over as I'm just the victim. And that's what I meant by that. Owning your truth and letting it go. Not letting it go in a sense of forgetting, but letting it go where it's like, this is not going to hold me back. This is not going to stop me. It happened. It's a part of my experience, my human experience, but this, this ain't everything. And that's what I wanted her to understand. But there has to be a vulnerability in accepting that it had happened. 
you cannot change it and to cry for that person, that little girl or that little boy who was molested, to cry for that, to feel that and know what it feels like and then to let it go. Because when I was writing my book, I never cried over it. I've always tried to deny it or block it, but I've never allowed myself to feel it. And while I was writing my book, I allowed myself to feel it. And when I did feel it, a whole lot of emotions came out. But that was the first time I allowed myself to feel grief, to feel violated, to feel hurt, to feel what I felt at that moment. So blocking it and acting like it didn't happen or trying to avoid it because I can't avoid it. It's a part of my experience, but it's not my whole experience. I'm still 23. I got a whole lot of life to live. So with that being said, find your purpose. I thought getting a degree was my purpose. It wasn't. I thought all these other irrelevant things weren't. My purpose is to be an author. My purpose is to walk in my truth. My purpose is to help others realize their truth and for others to heal from whatever they're traumatized by. And once I realized that, all that extra stuff was so irrelevant. Trying to achieve a certain status that society put, that was not for me. When when I found my purpose, I no longer cared that I need this job with this title, with this pay. It, it was irrelevant to me. It no longer mattered to me that, oh, it's almost five. Am I done? Because I just want to go home and forget the day. My day starts when I wake up and my day ends when I completed my task. And that could be five hours, which rarely happens. And it could be all the way up to 12 hours, which a lot of times it does. But it makes me happy. It makes me complete because that's something that I wanted to do. That's something that I determined. And that's something I realized that was my purpose. And that's the thing about purpose. Only you can recognize it. Everybody can give you suggestions. Everybody can say you're good at this. Everybody can have their own opinions, but it means nothing if it doesn't belong to you. It means nothing if you haven't realized it. It doesn't mean anything if that's not what you truly want to do and it doesn't bring you happiness. Your purpose may not make you a gazillionaire, but it may make you happy. It may make you satisfied. It may give you a reason to get up in the morning. A lot of people don't have a reason to get up in the morning other than bills need to get paid and they're not dead. If they were dead, if they had no bills, so find your purpose. Whatever it is in life, find your purpose, pursue it, and be the best at it. So that's the end of my video. Tell me what you think below. What's your purpose? You know, have you ever been through ups and downs? Do you consider your title as your purpose? How did you find your purpose? So let me know and comment. Rate, subscribe, and I'm out.